I met Rick about 10 years ago and we discovered that we had a lot of interests that we shared, uh, such as travel and checking out new places or mysterious places. That's right. It was both in a passion really for ancient histories and, and treasure and uh, you know all those sort of things. As soon as the trip is done the next thing we ask is yeah what's the next adventure? Right and uh, the next adventure is a doozy. Um, Kevin uh -huh. just told me about this guy I'd never heard of before and uh, instantly I was intrigued. Yeah uh, Forrest Fenn, very interesting guy. Uh, he has a history of um, archaeology he has his own archaeological dig, digging up uh, native ruins in New Mexico, as well as he was a fighter pilot in the Vietnam War and made his millions selling art. But the most interesting thing that this guy did is he decided to hide a treasure. He loves stories like Indiana Jones and he took a box of gold and jewels and other ancient artifacts and he hid it somewhere in the mountains. The clue is it's hidden in the mountains north of Santa Fe. Uh, so obviously that's, that's a massive search area and, and we needed to narrow it down a little bit. What Forrest Fenn did is he actually wrote a book, his memoirs, called Thrill of the Chase. And in that book, uh, there's a series of stories and also a specific poem. Mm -hmm. And uh, my girlfriend actually treated me to a, a gift of, of a copy of that book. Yeah. Uh, not the easiest book to find. Yeah, there's only, I think, 1,000 copies of this book, so it's uh, hard to get a hold of. Uh, the other thing is that he's got a poem, and uh, the poem has clues on how to uh, find the treasure. The poem is actually a map in a way. It's uh, a cryptic poem. I believe it contains nine specific clues. Begin it where warm waters halt, and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. From there it's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But tarry scant with marvel gaze, just take the chest and go in peace. Uh, but the book, it's got some uh, interesting hints uh, if you know how to read it the right way. So Kevin and I started doing crazy amounts of research, you know, um, poring over this book over and, and over again. And um, I noticed one thing that, that kind of stood out as a little bit strange. Uh, the yeah. book is, it, it's filled with a bunch of different drawings. And one of the drawings is initialed. None of the other drawings, you know, are. Um, so based on that, we, we tried to take a closer look at that drawing. I pointed out to Kevin. Yeah, uh, you know, I, Kevin, I remember that. Yeah. He borrowed the book, he took it home. I kind of uh, took the book and was uh, looking at it upside down. <laughs> and. Uh, Examining it really closely, I found something really interesting hidden in one spot of the uh, of the image. It looks like there are some words written, in, and it looks like it says "fly touse." Uh, I mean, maybe it's our minds playing tricks on us, but we're both pretty sure that that's a deliberate it move. Doesn't look like it quite belongs there. Right. So based on that, we decided to narrow our search area down to Taos in yeah. New Mexico. Now, we have tried to email uh, Forrest Fenn because on this, this book, it actually has uh, his email address. Um, but obviously, he's a busy guy. And well, I'm sure he gets a thousand emails a day. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of luck there. But um, we, we do think that the key to interpreting the, the clues in the poem is to get inside Forrest's head, to really understand who the man is, think like Forrest. And I think the key to that is understanding his memoirs. Uh, the chapter that sticks out to me is Tea with Olga. I think that was a very special event in his life. And um, I think that where he hid the treasure is, is a place that's certainly special to him. I think there's something hidden in there about his uh, archaeological exploits or maybe his personal hobbies like fishing. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna find something. I'm, I'm sure we can glean a little more information out of the book. And once we get to this area, I think uh, things are gonna come together. We bought our plane tickets. We're putting yeah. our money where our mouth is. We're ready. That's it. We land tomorrow and um, we can't wait to get our feet on the ground. Yeah, stay tuned for the adventure.
All right, well, we finally made it. Uh, we're here in Santa Fe at the hotel. Yeah, five hour delay. Yeah, but it was worth it because something incredible happened while we were oh, on that flight. Yeah, I paid $9 for internet so I could use my iPad. Best and $9 ever. <laughs> we tried earlier to contact Forrest Fenn with no response, but this time, while we're flying, he emailed us back and agreed to meet us for an interview. Unbelievable. I was taking a nap. Kevin woke me up and said, look who I got an email from. He, a last ditch effort, he emailed him again, and this time Forrest wrote back. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to meet up with Forrest Fenn at a local um, bookshop, uh -huh. and uh, we're going to have a quick impromptu interview. And uh, we've got a bit of a strategy going into this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to ask more questions about Forrest Fenn and all his interests and hobbies because I know he loves archaeology and he's got some great stories and I want to hear them. And I'm going to ask about the treasure uh, in kind of a roundabout way. Uh, I'm going to ask some questions that we have about the book, things that we noticed, and um, see if we can get a little bit more information out of them uh, that maybe helps us uh, towards yeah. our treasure hunt. Yeah. So we'll see you there at the interview at the bookstore. I came here today to meet with a couple of guys from Canada so that we could make a documentary. Um, well, so first off, uh, Kevin and I would like to say thank you. The whole reason that we, we planned this trip and we came down here to New Mexico, um, we're having a great time so far, uh, was because of your book and obviously the treasure hunt in the poem. My, my pleasure, sir. Having gone through the book, of those drawings, uh, I notice only one of them has initials beside it. That's the one with the airplane diving? Yes. So those drawings, they aren't all done by the same artist? There's different artists who Except contributed? That one. Except that one. He's the one that's different. Okay. Interesting. In 1988, I, I was diagnosed with everybody thought was terminal cancer. I lost a kidney, and a one hour operation turned into five. And my doctor told me that I had a 20% chance of living three years. Well, it took me a couple of weeks for that to soak in. And, and finally, I decided that, that if I've got to go, who says I can't take it with me? I don't subscribe to all these things I've heard all my life. So I've, I got this little treasure chest, and I started filling it up with wonderful things, primarily gold. And uh, I, I've had so much fun collecting things over the over 70 75 years of actively collecting that if I've got to go why not let somebody else go out and find my treasure chest and have as much fun doing that as I've had collecting these things that was one of my motivations but uh, we're an obese society today I wanted to, to get them off of the, out, out into the sunshine, smell what it's like to be a... I want to turn over a rotten log and see what's under it. Rick and I will be searching for the treasure, and if we happen to find it, we'd like to return that little bracelet that you, we've heard you speak about. Well, if you find that treasure chest, don't forget that I get 10% because I'm the one that hit it, remember? Well, <laughs> it, you can help us sell the gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It'll be hard to get it through the airplane and across the border, you know. Well, that, tre that treasure chest is 10 inches by 10 inches and it weighs 42 pounds. There are 20.2 troy pounds of gold in that treasure chest. It's heavy. It was so heavy that I was 79 or 80 years old when I hid that thing and I had to make two trips from my car to where I hid that thing because it, 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 was, it was that heavy for me. Mm. Oh. Well, I'm going to make him carry it all. <laughs> don't, don't trust him. <laughs> oh, but that, uh, that bracelet, why is that so uh, important to you? You seem to have a real attachment to it. Well, I was getting ready to close that treasure chest. I had it full of, you know, there's 265 big gold coins. There's hundreds and hundreds of gold nuggets. Two of them are as big as a chicken egg. And I had some, there's some beautiful little ancient Chinese jade carvings and uh, a Tyrone and, and Sinu necklace that's 2,000 years old. I mean, wonderful things in that necklace. But I wasn't in the treasure chest. And I looked around because I wanted to be in that treasure chest with all that stuff. <laughs> so I looked at that bracelet and I said, well, I really didn't want anything in there that was cheap. And, and this was silver. It was nearly everything in that chest is gold. But I said, if I put that bracelet in there, something that I really enjoy, I, and and I'll, I'll miss it a lot. But I said, I can I can say that part of me is in that treasure chest. And I put it in there. I closed the uh, the lid, and I I just smiled at my. I was very proud of myself. 
It belongs to history now. Do you think anybody has found it yet, or do you think it's still Nobody out there? Nobody has found it. You're not going to find a treasure unless you decipher the, the nine clues in the poem. And uh, mm -hmm. I wrote a blog this morning that says that that poem is a map, and it'll take you to the treasure if you can follow its directions. Sure. It's difficult to follow, but it isn't impossible. You don't have to be lucky to find a treasure. Okay. You have to be smart. You have to read the poem and comprehend what what the clues mean. Right. If, if you don't have the first clue, you don't have anything. All right, well, we just finished our interview with Forrest Fenn. Kevin? That was amazing. What a treat to meet Forrest Fenn. Super nice guy. Uh, so where are we headed now? We're on the road to Taos. Beautiful view. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, I've been out here a lot, <laughs> just looking at the view. Nice. A lot of birds here. A lot of birds here. It's actually pretty cold this morning. Oh uh, my gosh! Last night I went out to get the uh, one of the tripods. <laughs> I touched the metal. It was so cold. It's crazy how hot during the day it gets, and then at night it's like. Near freezing. Yeah, time. you have to dress for two uh, time zones, Lots or of layers, temperature yeah. zones. But we'll be cooking by noon. Yeah. Um, but before we go, uh, let's head over to that Rio Grande Gorge Bridge. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Um, Forrest had mentioned something about it. Why don't we? Yeah, he said we should go. It's a heck of a view. Yeah. Just for the for the view. Well, Forrest was right. That's a serious view. Yeah. But this isn't the bridge that I want to start the treasure hunt on. It's the Taos Junction Bridge. It's nearby, and uh, let's go there next. As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, I can keep my secret where, and hint of riches new and old. Begin it where warm waters halt, and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. I know you love fishing. Uh, my father, he used to take the whole family way up in the woods and he always f wanted to find the fishing hole that nobody had been to. What are some of your favorite fishing areas in New Mexico? The, the Pecos River is a wonderful little fishing stream. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you get up into northern New Mexico in, in the trees and the hills, then there's lots of little streams and all of them have fish in it. Mm -hmm. I was a professional fishing guide at age 13. This is the Taos Junction Bridge. I believe this is where warm waters halt, for a very specific reason. Now, Forrest Fenn is an avid fisherman. New Mexico is the only state whose regulations, fishing regulations, indicate fishing waters as warm waters. Now, special trout waters are above Taos Junction Bridge, and warm waters are below. So I believe this is where warm waters halt. We're right about here. This is the uh, Taos Junction Bridge, and I want us to get down here. This is the Arroyo Hondo Canyon, and I think that's where we need to go do some searching. Okay, Rick, Hondo Canyon is just a few miles or so below the Taos Junction Bridge which makes it not far, but too far to walk. And just before we get there, I want to pull over and show you a spot alongside the Rio Grande that I believe is the home of Brown, which makes Hondo Canyon the spot to put in. We are just about to enter Hondo Canyon, and I think this is the home of Brown. Massive amounts of brown rock. In ancient times, the Puebloans would scrape the patina off these rocks to use it in their pottery and artwork. So we're going into Hondo Canyon, below the home of Brown.
there will be no paddle up your creek. This is a dry riverbed. As you can see, <laughs> just heavy loads and uh, water high at the top. Is there water there? Let's go find out. Kevin, you know this is like prime rattlesnake country, right? Vigilant. Yeah, I, I wore two pairs of socks. Huh. Well, Rick, we've been all over the place. Uh, neither of us have seen anything that we could call a blaze. The only thing blazing is the sun. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and no water, no waterfall. Uh, definitely there is water at some point of the year here because this is a runoff. But uh, no treasure. There is a, a treasure trove of, of minerals here, though. But not the treasure we're looking for. Always the optimist. <laughs> I think we're done for our hike today. Let's, uh, let's try your idea tomorrow. Morning. We uh, somehow managed to survive Kevin dragging us into Snake Bite Canyon yesterday. You don't like snakes, Rick. Not when there's a million places that they can hide. Um, but today, uh, I'm hoping that we have a little bit more luck. Uh, we're going to follow my version of um, my interpretation of, uh -huh. of the poem and the clues. Uh, and to do that, we need to head over to Taos Pueblo. Oh yeah, I want to see that. The Pueblo should be fascinating. Taos Pueblo, it's, it's kind of magic there, you know. The, there's a little stream of water that runs past Taos Pueblo, and that's that's a reason to build your Pueblo there. Very interesting. A lot of great stories have come out of there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's worth a trip. Here we are at the Taos Pueblo. Now, there's many Pueblos, but this one is very significant because it's a world UNESCO heritage site. And the reason for that is it's the longest continuously inhabited place in the United States. In fact, hundreds of years before Europe was pulling itself out of the Dark Ages, this area was inhabited. It's a very sacred area. That mountain back there, that's Pueblo Peak, also known as Taos Mountain. And um, it's sacred because behind it, there's something called the Blue Lake. And essentially, to the natives, that's their Garden of Eden. It's the source of all life making this a very spiritual place. In fact, it's the only place in all of America that land was given back to the natives because of spiritual reasons. And that happened in 1970 with a bill that was passed by Nixon. As well, this area was the focal point for Vasquez de Coronado's expedition, the Spanish when they came in looking for the seven cities of Chibola, which is the seven cities of gold. A chapter that sticks out to me in the thrill of the chase is tea with Olga. That's a great story, isn't it? It is, it is. Tea, uh, Olga lived next door to my gallery. She owned a little a little house there. Uh, Olga knew that I wanted to expand my gallery, and the only place to expand it was through her property. And she called me on the phone one day. She said, Forrest, can, can you come see me? And I said, yeah. And I, walked, I went over there with her, her lawyer was there. Hmm. And she said, Forrest, I'm dying of cancer. She said, I will write into my will that you can have my property at its appraised value if you'll spread my ashes over Taos Mountain from your airplane. We signed a little piece of paper that said that, and we did that. Now, why did she choose Taos Mountain for her ashes to be spread? She told me that her father's ashes were on Taos Mountain and she wanted to go back and be with her father. One thing that, that stuck out to me was you mentioned you and her had a ritual of drinking tea together. Uh, and you, you mentioned very specifically green tea, black tea, you know. Um, is there, was that a very important thing that you two shared? Or why, why were you so sort He's of... asking me to put an X on a map, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You say, next question. It was a special memory that you shared with her, yeah. the tea drinking? Uh, uh, Olga was special. Yeah. Okay. That area back there, very, very spiritual. And that is the Taos Mountain where Fen spread Olga's ashes. And so I think his tea drinking was warm waters flowing. And when she passed away, that's when warm waters halted. 
So I think it's his way, that's the little clue, that that section, that mountain, is where warm waters halt. Now, of course, this is the most significant Pueblo, and a Pueblo is adobe homes, which is made of clay and straw, and all brown homes. Put in below the home of brown. For this area we're gonna search, this is our home of brown. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. There is a canyon just to the east of the Taos Pueblo. However, only natives of the Pueblo itself are allowed to go there because it's sacred. If you want to find another canyon below the home of Brown, take it in the canyon down. That leads us here to the Taos Canyon which is following Highway 64, and on a map is just a little bit south of the Pueblo itself. Now, it's not too far, but too far to walk because you're not able to walk through the native lands to get here. So we've driven our way down, and the next clue, there is no place for the meek. Well, we'll show you in a second what we think that means. The river behind me is the Rio Fernando, or the Fernando River. Now this river follows all the way along the Taos Canyon. Now it's significant because Fernando in Spanish actually means brave or conqueror. It's no place for the meek, it's a place for someone who's brave. Now, the Taos Canyon is made up of smaller individual canyons, and it's one of those that we're heading to next. From there it's no place for the meek, the end is ever drawing nigh. You can see behind me there's a sign that says Casita de Piedra. Now that's significant because that means home of stone. And in the chapter Tea with Olga, Forrest Fenn refers to Olga's home as her little casita. And he doesn't often use Spanish words in the book, so I feel like that's a bit of a hint. So we followed the Rio Fernando, the river that's brave, and that has led us to this part of Taos Canyon, which is actually called the Hanging Tree Canyon. The end is ever drawing nigh at the end of a noose of the hanging tree. That leads us into the Casita Canyon, where we're headed next. In this canyon, there should be a creek that we're looking for. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. We're following this stream up the canyon. We can see that there's this small creek that runs up the canyon. It forks right and left. If we stay to the right, that'll bring us right into Casita Canyon. Now the clue is there is no paddle up your creek. Obviously, it's flowing downhill, and it's very small, so you wouldn't be able to row up here. So again, all of the clues in the poem are falling into place. I guess we better be careful now. Uh, uh, this is definitely some bear droppings. Uh, bears love to eat nuts and seeds and berries, whatever they can find in the forest, and that's what it looks like. So, we've got to keep an eye out from now on. <laughs> that is a waterfall, Kevin. Not a very big one, but that's a waterfall. And I'm willing to bet if Fen hid the treasure at the top of Casita Canyon, he hid it up here. Rocky outcropping, heavy loads, water high. <laughs> this could be it, it could actually be here. Let's turn over some rocks. I'm sure it's got to be here somewhere. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But tarry scant with marble gaze, 
Just take the chest and go in peace. It's not there. It's your fault. You're an idiot. <laughs> he looked at the map upside down. We're lost. No, seriously though, <laughs> we dug. Uh, we dug under everything. There was no blaze. Couldn't find a blaze. There was a fire pit. But yeah. I mean, I was so sure. You know, all of the clues in the poem well, lined up every step of the way. Yeah, it really did line up. But that's the thing about that poem. You know, is it's it's vague enough. That, that there's a lot of different ways you can interpret it, and that's, I'm sure, why it hasn't been found yeah, yet. Yeah, it could mean just about anything. But like Forrest wrote in my book, um, keep on looking. Fence treasure, it's out there somewhere. So why is it that I must go and leave my troll for all to seek? The answers I already know. I've done it tired and now I'm weak. So hear me on and listen good. Your effort will be worth the coal. If you've been brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold.